Hi, I'm Jennifer Nicholson with Oklahoma State University Range Club. I'm here with Mitch Greer, who's a PhD student studying Old World Blue Stem, which is an invasive species in central and southwest Oklahoma. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm going to say, as you can see here, I'm going to say we have a specimen of Old World Blue Stem, this being Yellow Blue Stem, that's actually growing along a roadside ditch. This is honestly, I'm going to say, was introduced as a uh, beneficial species originally. It was brought in to help increase forage production on marginal crop ground. It was planted on the CRP ground and then also into roadside ditches to help stabilize the soil. The trouble is, is that Old World Blue Stem, since its original plantings in 1917, has started to expand its range to our native prairies and started to take them over quite rapidly. As today, it's estimated that Old World Blue Stem has been planted on or taken over millions of acres in the southern and central Great Plains. Now, Old World Blue Stem actually constitutes a group of suite of uh, warm season grasses, I'm going to say, that include around here yellow blue stem, Caucasian blue stem, and then in Texas, Clayburg blue stem. Now, yellow blue stem goes by numerous different names. I'm going to say in Texas, a lot of times it's known as King's Ranch blue stem. Now, my work is focused on community level um, changes that are caused by the invasion of the species. And say so what we see a lot of times is that the native prairies, after being invaded by Old World Blue Stem, tend to become monospecific stands of Old World Blue Stem, depending on the species. So what we see is that once diverse grassland switches into a monoculture, I'm going to say losing lots of microhabitats with it. And some previous work that's been done on it by Dr. Karen Hickman has shown that it reduces not only the number of bird species in a grassland, but also the numbers of each individual species. And this is directly related to the fact that they also have lower arthropod abundance within these old world blue stem stands when you compare that to native prairie. Some of my work has looked at positive and negative feedback loops that look how possible mechanisms into which old world blue stem is actually facilitating its own growth in being able to give itself an advantage into the native prairies. I'm going to say a couple of the hypotheses we've been looking at are the fact that it may produce greater biomass utilizing more nitrogen. So when they're burned, as many of our native prairies are, it actually volatilizes most of the nitrogen off, creating a nitrogen deficit too low for even the native species to be able to survive. So basically beating at it, beating the old native species at its own game. Another one we've been looking at is the allelopathic effect. Sometimes if you look at yellow blue stem or especially Caucasian blue stem, you'll see multiple small bunches with nothing growing in between these bunches, which we refer to as an interstitial zone. Now the, the clumps of Caucasian blue stem will actually extend out, growing into these areas eventually, but no other native species are able to overtake that. So we've also looked into the allelopathic um, probability that that's what the old world blue stem is actually utilizing. Say some other work we've been looking at is possible change in the soil microbial community. By running a phospholipid fatty acid analysis and hopefully doing some genetics work, we'll be able to see whether they're actually changing the soil microbial community in a way, mainly the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi, to see if they change that in a way that would influence them or benefit them more than it does the native species. And then a final component of my project is looking at how old world blue stem invasion and switching native prairies that are diverse into the monocultures basically to see how that is affecting the small mammal community here in central, north central Oklahoma. And what we found is we have not seen necessarily a difference, difference in the species richness, but we have seen a shift in the species um, relative abundance or the community of the mammals that occupy those grasslands. Old world blue stem tends to create a lot more litter matter as it produces greater amount of biomass, which allows I think larger mammals such as the cotton rat to bury underneath and forage readily. So in the old world blue stem, um, invaded prairies we tend to see more of the cotton rat species versus the native prairies we see more of the deer mice which is a smaller I'm going to say rodent species and which cannot penetrate into that litter layer and I think makes it more difficult for them to forage so they tend to occupy the native prairies so it's that not necessarily affecting the species richness but it does in fact tend to influence the species composition that occupy those grasslands. So as you can see, what grass species that was once planted for a beneficial purpose and still may be being planted today are going to say definitely having some negative ecological effects. Here you can definitely see the yellow blue stem, which is a lighter yellow species right along the roadway and very thick along the fenceways. And it says, I don't know if this was necessarily planted here for sure, but I'm going to say if not, it was definitely brought in by vehicle travel from species. Like I said, the seed of this species, which is very prolifically produced, definitely is easily spread by vehicles. Once again, as we look out into a mostly native prairie, like I said, you can see the lighter yellow vegetation actually is a big patch of yellow blue stem that has started to invade this native prairie, probably originating from the roadway.